Up to now, you may have been using something like MAMP or WAMP or even ZAMP for your local development environments. And that's fine for beginners. But as you advance into building more advanced kind of applications and websites, you begin to need more in, you begin to need more from your development environment. Things like PHP extensions. Encrypt is a very good one. A few months ago before I started to use Vagrant, uh, I was using MAMP and I wanted to start getting into Laravel. The problem is, however, Laravel requires Encrypt, which is a, P a PHP uh, password extension. And MAMP made it extremely difficult to install Encrypt. I mean, it took about an hour of Googling. But if I had known about Vagrant back then, then my life would have been much simpler. Okay, so getting into the lesson now. The first thing that you want to do is go to virtualbox.org and hit downloads. And then you obviously want to choose your your operating system here. I already have mine installed, so I don't need to worry about that. But once that's done, go to vagrantup.com, hit download, and then just choose your operating system and follow the instructions. So once that's all done, you want to go to your command line and you want to make sure that Vagrant is actually installed. So all you have to do is type Vagrant. And if you get a list of commands like this, then everything went fine. So now that Vagrant is installed, the first thing that we want to do is make a new directory. And I have a dedicated websites directory for this, but it could it could be on your desktop or anywhere. It, does, it really doesn't matter where you make this. So this directory is going to be the name of the website or application that you're working on. So in this case, I'll just call it Vagrant Demo. So once that's done, you want to CD into Vagrant Demo or whatever you called your application, sorry, uh, directory. And then what you want to do is type Vagrant, uh, sorry, not up, we want to type Vagrant in it. And what this will do is create a Vagrant file inside the directory. So if we just list everything here, you'll see that we have this Vagrant file. And if we edit it, and let's just set the syntax to Ruby, you'll see this file. So most of it, you don't have to worry about at all. The only things that you really do have to worry about is this. So all you need to do is replace the space here with your box. I recommend Ubuntu slash trusty64. That's what I always use. The next thing that you want to do is just uncomment that line. And that's all you need to do here. So if we just get rid of that, what we can do now is type vagrant up. Okay, so once that's done, what you want to do is say Vagrant SSH, and then hopefully you'll see this screen. So to access our site, we want to go to localhost colon 8080. And the reason that we're not seeing anything here is because we haven't installed uh, Apache or Nginx. So to do that, we need to use the apt get command, and we need to use sudo as well with that. And the first thing that we're going to do is say update. And that's going to update the apt get repositories. So once that's done, you should see a screen like this. Next thing that we're going to do is actually install Apache. So sudo apt get uh, Apache, uh, sorry, sudo apt get install Apache 2. Then we want to hit Y for yes, just to confirm that we want to continue. And give it a couple of seconds and that should install Apache for us. So now if we hit refresh in our browser, we should see this uh, default Apache Ubuntu default page. Now there's something that we haven't covered yet and that's something called shared folders. So if we just go to Vagrant and list, yep, this is it. So if we say touch index.html, what that does is it creates a file called index.html. And then if we open this up in our finder, you'll see that that index.html was created there. Now, if we delete that here and list everything here in our VM, you'll see that it's gone. 
So this is a shared folder. Everything that we create in this directory inside the VM is going to turn up in our default operating system and vice versa. So with that in mind, if we go to VAD www and list everything, you'll see that we have this HTML directory and inside here is index.html. And this is this page that we're seeing here. So all we need to do is start developing our website, right? Well, not quite. We need to change the Apache document route to our shared folder so we can develop our application on our operating system. So to do this, we say sudo nano etc apache2 sites enabled and 000-default.conf and down here you'll see this document root. We want to change this to that vagrant directory where we just were. Now if we leave this like that we're going to get a forbidden error. So to fix this we need to add a couple of lines of configuration just below here. We're going to say directory vagrant which is our shared folder and we're going to close that and we're going to set some options so we're going to set indexes uh, follow symlinks and multi views and these are case sensitive so follow along follow along closely we're also going to allow override all and this allows us to override our configuration inside our directories and then we're going to say require all granted so if we write that out and exit, and then we restart Apache, and we do that with sudo service Apache to restart. Don't worry if you see this message, it's normal. So hit refresh now and we get this forbidden error. And that's because we don't actually have anything in this directory. If we were to say touch index.html, and let's edit that. Hello world. And there we go, our site is working. Now there is one problem. Let's get rid of that file there and let's create an index.php file. And let's insert some actual PHP. So if we write that out and visit the page in our browser, we get this and that's because PHP isn't installed. So that's very simple to remedy. All we need to do is say sudo apt get install PHP5 and we also want to install modlib apache. So I have this pasted in my clipboard because I can never remember it, but it's just on the screen there if you want to copy it. So all you have to do then is hit enter. So once that's done, you should be able to use PHP on your server.